record on this computer. Hi, everybody. Welcome to your Tuesday marketing call. Uh, this is a coaching slash webinar for exclusively to our coaching groups and to our lists of people who show we've talked to in the past. Uh, you can go to homeadvocates.io and learn more about the company. Click on uh, coaching if you'd like to find out about our guaranteed method for getting face-to-face. -face. Maybe we'll get into some of that today. As always, I am joined by Fred Solomon. How are you, Fred? Hey, good morning, Lee. Good morning. Good. Great. Uh, so, good crowd, good group. Excuse me for being dry. I think I'm going to be perpetually dry for as long as I live in Nevada. I'll just always have a small cough at the back of my throat. With that said, Let's jump right into it. Today's call is about marketing or doing marketing to get listings in a down market. I would challenge everybody that's in the coaching group this week to make it a priority to let's all go get a listing this week. I think this is a noble aspect. Um, I think this is the way it should, we should all go. And I think it would be fantastic if we all put in a little bit of effort this week to go out and uh, get a brand new listing. If you are an investor on this call or re-watching this, and we do have those that don't have real estate licenses, we don't call them listings, we call them deals. Watch the air quotes again, deals. <laughs> Which to me is still hilarious. But uh, nonetheless, no difference in the approaches that we're gonna talk about today. Uh, so this all started because uh, I receive probably I don't know, 150, 200 emails per hour, plus or minus from everything in real estate that you can possibly imagine. And one of them caught my eye and it was the Inman email for today that had the nine strategies for getting a listing in a down market. Where do I begin on why this is interesting to me? One, they chose it for their email to go out. Two, I don't remember previously Inman sending out a single email where that actually occurred, where they actually put something about a down market in any of their emails over the last two years, uh, three years at the latest of me staring at them intensely. Um, and lastly, flippantly, just how to get those listings in a down market. So I Googled it. And as of August and September, most of the coaches you know, most of the marketing companies you know, most of the people who have real estate websites, as of August and September, have been putting up written content in regards to how to get listings in a down market. Keyword, down market. Um, so I'm not going to spend, we, we spend way too much time on all of these calls talking about why this is a down market or why this is a downturn. Some markets are greater than others, unless you're in places like South Florida or Orange County, where you're bulletproof, um, and you are protected from the current shift within the market, call it what you will, a housing recession, a shift, a down market. They're all, it's all the same terminology. It's all the same terminology. And I want to effectively discuss um, ways to get a listing this week. Uh, most people that are in real estate right now fall into two categories, demographically speaking, 65 plus or brand new and couldn't find their butt in the dark with a flashlight real estate agent. So let's just get that group out of the way and not worry about them, okay? People who are brand new that have gotten their real estate licenses over the last two or three years do not have the experience for the market that they are currently in. The 65 plus crowd doesn't have the technological experience. Not all of them. I'm generalizing for the room. They don't have the technological experience to compete in the current market. I want to say that at the top. Because if I give a recommendation to run some kind of Google ad or a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad or, or whatever, okay, I, the normal kickback I get is, uh, won't work, I've used it before. No, you've used people who just put people on your landing page. 
that's not the reality of creating content and creating engagement and to go out into the market with the market match, right? So we spent last week talking about message to market match. Got it? Everybody caught up? Any questions, feel free to kick those in at any time in the chat bar. I believe there's a question bar that I suppose I could leave up as well. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, it's people telling me that I didn't have the chat on this morning, which happens to me. All right. So, uh, and if I need to, I'll jump on the screen and we will talk about that and we will, we will go down that road. So let's start with the start. I'm not going to do this because most of you are already existing coaching students and I already know the answer to this. We talked about it last week. I'm going to end with, I'm going to start with it this week and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You must go plumb all your lists. You need to have a list. If you've got a stack of business cards in your drawer, Go put them and make them into an email list. Even if it's just for the purposes of networking, start with a list. Get out an Excel spreadsheet, name, phone number, email, type of contact, right? That's it. If it's somebody in the industry, you mark them as somebody in the industry. You never know, it might be a referral, but you've got to start with the list. And this is where I'm going to let Fred off the chain Fred, the importance of a list. Oh, my Lord. It's how I survived. Um, without, without contacting your previous clients in this kind of market and without networking and doing things to put your fishing pole in the water and making sure that it is not empty, that you have bait on the end of your fishing pole, the bait is called good content. And the content comes from what's going on in the marketplace. And so, I mean, I have, I put content up every day. And the last one was regarding reverse mortgages. I keep getting questions about reverse mortgages and I have a feeling it's because so many people in the loan business are talking about reverse mortgages now and the reason why people are talking about them is because you know the baby boomers are getting to that age and now they can qualify for a reverse mortgage and I I just had a um, it just frustrates me so much that what people are told when they're talk, when people talk to them about reverse mortgages. So I'll just share with you a recent Facebook post and it was yesterday and it, I'll, I'll it was, put it up on the screen for you. Happy okay. To do it. Do, do, do. Last week I uh, put Fred's stuff up uh, on the email so that you could join him and follow him so oh i gotta oh i hate the layout of this can i just every time i have to jump over and change profiles for the new setup so frustrating and i'll talk uh, christy I'll, t I'll answer your question regarding syndications um but this is right now um this is content is so important for your list, once you have your established list, and we have so many events, you know, so many of these coaching calls that we've done about growing your list and how to do all that. And, and so I won't, I won't get into that too much, but the content that you put out to your list, and even if you're a realtor, it's okay to talk about what I'm going to talk about right now, because Believe it or not, the listing agent who sold my buddy's mom the house was the one promoting this to his mother. And it was uh, 
if we scroll down uh, where it says another PSA announcement. Yep, here you go. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, my, my buddy called me yesterday morning and he goes, uh, hey, Fred, they're talking to my mom about getting a reverse mortgage again. And me, I'm like, WTF? Uh, buddy, yeah, I know. They're saying this and that. Uh, me, let's get them on the phone and I'll ask them some questions. My buddy says, they're saying that they're not making any money on the deal. And I'm me, I'm like, bull, you know, swear word, expletive. Uh, they're huge money makers for loan officers. Sorry for the visible and invisible swear words. Buddy, okay, let's do a conference call with my mom. Here's the scenario of the mom. $500,000 cash in the bank. Can afford the payment. Needs $25,000 to fix up the house a little bit. Tons of that equity in the home. Me. Get a freaking HELOC. And I said, it reminds me of Larry from Sprit, Slip, Sit and Sleep. They're freaking free. And then uh, I said, see below picture for verification purposes. And I had met him at a few parties with the radio station because he advertises a lot on the radio. But anyways, and, and for people who aren't in this area, Larry from Sit and Sleep is uh, there, he's on television every five seconds, you know, uh, marketing his mattress company, sit and sleep. So anyways, that to me is important information to let people know about. And the information that you give people has to be honest. And I said, these are big money makers. My buddy told me, Oh, we're, you know, I'm doing this, you know, and I'm not making anything on the deal. I'm like, oh my God, this is just killing me to hear all this stuff. So what do I do? I go write about it. I just write about it to help other people because I know if it's him being told that, he's not the only one being told that. And of course, you know, it's, you just got to get that information out there. Um, and the content is, is the stuff that creates the phone calls and it's not today. It's watering the plant. That's all you're doing. It might be a phone call six months from now. People remember stuff. You know, I save emails from four or five years ago. I save them in folders. And when that request comes up, I look for that whatever it is that I'm looking for. Like lately it's been stated income, home equity lines of credit. People who can't qualify for their tax returns, but they need cash out and they have a too low of an interest rate on their first mortgage. So what do they need to do? They need to get a stated income line of credit. Those are very, very popular. 90 days to, to get that loan done, 90 days. So what can the, the realtors you know, put up there. Uh, what What's good information for realtors today to let your clients know about? Well, well and, I'll and this, and by the way, I want to say this, this is where you want to base the trends on what's trending. Again, one of the advantages to being in this group is I'm not expecting you guys to spend three or four hours a day to see what people are talking about. You always want a trending topic. And the number one trending topic by far um is interest rate by far by far in real estate that is the discussion there is almost no other discussion and this comes from everybody i do videos with across the country interest rate is the deal killer right now interest rate is the issue right now so if i'm creating content fred i i gotta follow the trend line i don't care if i'm doing social media tagging back, et cetera, um, or using any of the marketing methods with my list as well. But it start my, the content I would physically create, be it written, be it a meme, be it, uh, be it uh, video content, right? Uh, would be something based on interest rate. I, I agree. And remember, yes, last week on Thursday, we were talking about 
I was going to um, do a uh, another subject to, um, you know, webinar or a Zoom call. That one got yeah. um, a lot of traction. I got a lot of response on that, and it was basically want to know how to buy a house and get a below market interest rate in today's historically higher 15 to 20 year high mortgage rates. And I said, are you selling a property and trying to get top dollar? Let's chat about the topic of subject to purchases. And I explained what a subject to purchase is. Basically, when you purchase a property with subject to financing, that means you're not getting a new loan on the property and you're making payments on the existing seller's loan, which opens up a lot of questions and liability for everyone involved. So I talk about topics on how to accomplish that type of goal. And a lot of investors love subject to purchases. They're, uh, they're risky. There's a lot of risk. We've talked about them, but the topic, when you bring it up, okay, I mean, I got 45 comments on it, and a lot of people are interested in learning about it. So we're going to do it on October 28th, which is a Friday at 9 a.m., and uh, I'm going to figure out how to record it this time. I'm going to get... I'm going to, uh, cause it's such an important topic and I have such good people that have agreed with to help me, uh, with this topic who have done lots of deals. So there are things that you can promote things that you can talk about. There is liability to be discussed and I'm trying to get a real estate attorney who specializes in subject twos or knows a lot about subject to financing. So that's my goal before the 28th of October. If anybody knows an attorney who has experience with subject to financing, I would love to reach out to that person. And you might have want to that. call Ron Ballard out there. Okay. Great lead. I believe Ron's still out there and I know he's an attorney and he's an investor and most of them, most of us already know him. So he's got uh, credibility within that, that circle. Ron Ballard. Okay. If he's still doing it, God knows. I'm sure I would like to believe that Ron has made enough that he's probably done with all the shenanigans at this point, but yeah, uh, would for you just uh, for proximity purposes uh unmute no you don't need to unmute judy i'll uh explain so judy's question goes back to also creating content right which is interest rate buy downs we've actually done a ton of videos on buy downs uh so when we talk about content where you take a listing oh where are you there it is six eight four five do, 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 do. So for those of you who don't know the saga that are new on the call, uh, we did a whole series of how this property you're looking at in Las Vegas, 6845, came to be. Uh, it was actually done with a partnership with another real estate agent who wasn't really doing open houses that actually uh, hired uh, me to do marketing for it. And ultimately, the listing became my wife's right? Uh, because we were doing, well, to be perfectly honest, a better job of marketing. Uh, so to your question, Judy, uh, in here, we actually included uh, verbiage. I'll give you guys the link. Uh, and maybe you can talk about buying down or verbiage on buy down, Fred. Yeah. And how to uh, effectively use it. Because I think it's a good message. I think the right Talking about all of these things are finding ways to get people to engage, to buy, or right, and ultimately to remove the fear of somebody selling the property based on the current market conditions. So when you're in a down market, uh, or as the market, let's just call it the market as it stands right now is a buyer's market. So you need to find ways to entice buyers 
who traditionally use financing. People who spend all cash are totally different creatures. They're totally different creatures. Investment people are looking in investment uh, locations for properties that can be Airbnb'd and verboed. And that's why specifically the markets that are having um, a plateau period, right, where they've sort of settled a little bit and haven't shown declines, Vegas is showing a 10% decrease in property value. Uh, I just saw a top 10 list. Vegas was right in the middle of the back. They were like 9.8 or something. But and generally speaking, everybody in that range group was in the 10% zone. So take that for what it's worth. 10% decrease uh, year to date, I might add. It's not year over year. That's year to date, which is um, a much bigger situation. Okay. <sighs> So, Fred, can you explain um, appropriate use California's California's rules on verbiage is probably the safest because uh, clearly here in Las Vegas, if you don't know it, the way they are advertising right now, it's criminal the activity that the agents are using uh, to get listings, to procure buyers, to get people to come into mortgage like. I cannot believe the type of marketing that's being done, uh, basically recklessly, uh, almost all of it based on bait and switch. So what is the correct way that if you want to entice a buyer that say the seller is offering up $15,000 for a buyer's interest buy, rate buy down, can you expand upon that a little bit? Yeah, so um, the goal is to help the real estate market maintain value, right? And not see these values just come crashing down. And obviously that has a lot to do with the jobs market. Uh, and we had uh, the jobs market come out on Friday. We had 263,000 jobs created in the U.S. economy for the month of September. So again, the jobs market is holding steady right now. But to answer Lee's question, um, I'll, I'll, uh, the, the, the interest rates went up three-eighths of a percent last week because we had another strong jobs market. When the economy starts losing jobs, that's when we'll see the interest rates come down. They're predicting that to happen in the first and second quarter of next year. They're predicting 4.4% unemployment. Right now, we're at 3.5. Okay. So... Um, interest rates, when the economy is doing good, interest rates go up. When we have inflation, interest rates go up. When we have a recession, which we are technically in a recession right now, interest rates come down. But the inflation data is so much stronger than the recession data because typically in a recession, the economy loses jobs. That's not happening right now. In this recession, the economy is gaining jobs. We just finished the third quarter of 2022. The third quarter ended September 30th. The GDP numbers are going to come out towards the end of October. I'm guessing around the last week of October. If we are in, if we have negative GDP, that will be the third quarter in a row where we have been in a recession. So that is going to bring down the interest rates, but because the economy is still gaining jobs, it's not considered to be a bad recession. So they're calling it, quote unquote, a housing recession. So to answer Lee's question, the answer to the question is, in order to buy down the rate, you want to be careful today because if we do go into a worse recession and we do actually have loss of jobs interest rates will come down with our with zero cost loans you can always refinance to the lower rate and not pay any closing costs so it doesn't make sense to pay closing costs unless the seller is paying for those closing costs on a buy down, typically what they do is if the current interest rates are 6.875 today, 
they'll do 4.875 for the first year, 5.875 for the second year. What is required from the seller is that the seller put the difference between the note, the, the lifetime rate of 6.875 and the current rate of the buy down to 4.875. So that's a 2% difference. So let's chat about a million dollar loan. 2% on a million dollars is $20,000, right? Then the next year, they usually do a 1% buy down. It's a 2-1 buy down. So 1% on a million dollars is $10,000, right? So now if you take 20 plus 10, we're basically saying you got to put $30,000 into an account and they use that $30,000 from the seller's proceeds to pay the, dis the difference between the note rate and the buy down rate. So the seller is the ones paying for that $30,000, right? Now, another approach is just to do a permanent buy down on the rate to 1% lower for the entire life of the loan. What you do is you pay about two points to buy down the rate 1% lower than, let's just say 5.875 today. My wholesale cost is 0.875. So I charge one point above my wholesale cost. And at two points at 5.875 today, which is 1% below the current market rates for the life of the loan, we get the seller to pay those two points. Well, on a million dollars, two points is $20,000. Escrow, title, credit report, appraisal fee, underwriting fees. All those fees are going to add up to a be about $5,000 to $6,000. So for $25,000 or $26,000 out of the seller's pocket, the seller pays all those closing costs and gives the buyer a lifetime interest rate 1% lower than what he would get if he went to a local bank. So that is a smarter way to do the buy down, do a buy down for the life of the loan rather than a 2-1 buy down, which is what everybody is promoting right now is the 2-1 buy down. What you really need to do is just pay two points and get a lower rate for the entire life of the term of the loan. And that's a smarter way to do it. So the current rate for that would be 5.875, would be two points plus escrow title, credit report, underwriting, appraisal fees, all that stuff. Another $5,000, $6,000 there. So on a million dollar loan, we're talking 25 or $26,000. Just get the seller to pay that and tell them, uh, the seller tells the buyer, hey, I'll pay all that with, a, um, with an accepted offer. And the accepted offer price is a full price offer, but you can't write that in your you know, description or property description. Seller to pay full, you know, seller to pay $25,000 for accepted offer is how you would write it, not for full price offer, because then that's, you know, me, I don't know what they call it, but you can't do that. So anyways, that's some information to help people with listings with these higher rates. Yeah. And I think the one that everybody, do I have it right up on the screen? Is that about what it breaks down to? I got your spreadsheet up, which by the way, everybody should have sent an email to Fred to make sure that they got their amortization schedule. Oh. I yeah, put it up for you. In, uh, put in 5.875 for the rate. Yep, okay. that's good. Yep, and then compare that. So the payment on that is 56.77. Compare that to 6.875, 56.77 minus... You can do that? Uh, just change it to 6.875. Oh. And then yep. hit tap. So there you go. 77. Uh, so 65, 69. So we're just shy of $1,000 a month. That's about yep. $908 difference. 
for there it. There you go. Right. So anyways, that's um, basically go. a $900 cheaper payment for the entire life of the loan. And all of those costs are paid for by the seller. And it's a win-win. Seller sells his property at a higher price. And buyer has a $900 lower monthly payment for the entire life of the loan. And all those costs are paid for by the seller. It's, it's a great sell and people appreciate that. But the problem with people in this market is they think that prices are coming down. So they want to wait. And then I tell well, them. Yeah. And that goes to the question of where Tina, right? Uh, Tina writes, I think prices need to come down so that uh, average income can buy houses. Yes, that's very common within this current market, that's a current philosophy. And that's why many people this year sort of jumped on board the train of a housing recession, the current market, the housing recession, whatever you want to call it. So to your point, what do you need to specifically put out there as content, right? So if we, I've been kind of documenting this as we go along, at least for the first part, we'll probably carry this on during the week you know, you're making contact that is your engager, right? So the first one is definitely the interest rate. The second one is waiting for the prices to come down. Well, if you're waiting for that in Orange County, that would be a mistake, right? Uh, it is the number one reason, uh, I'll give you a pro tip. It's the number one reason when I'm doing uh, marketing videos with people on this call, the first question I have, how is the current market? And in some of those markets, there has been no changes in prices. So if you have a predominantly hot market, you have to be aware of it. Now you're talking about um, uh, for buyers waiting on prices. That's a whole different beast. I mean, it, it really... It really kind of is in a strange way. Uh, so let's talk about this for a moment. Yes, employment does not match the current uh, housing increase. And yes, prices will come back down and they generally run very parallel to what people make as median salary. That's just a historical fact, period. It's why it was easy to predict that the market would have a down period. Um, do I think it'll be greater than what happened prior to the pandemic or at the lowest point uh, during the first part of the lockdown? It's a good question. It, I'm afraid of the snowball effect of the economy in general kind of having the issues that it currently has, right? And that's that's what's going on. So let's talk about this, Fred. We got buyers that are on the sideline playing the game. By the way, if you've got buyers that are sitting on the sideline, cool. It means you have more buyers to work with in the future. You just need to keep feeding them content and keeping them, you know, in your, your audience, right? And keep creating engageable content. So let's talk about it. What is your comment to someone who really wants to buy, but they're really waiting for prices to come down? So, you know, we, we have that um, article that I wrote. And what the article that I wrote is what happens, what's going to cause prices to come down? Well, obviously, we know the Fed wants a housing reset right now. So we know that the Fed is doing everything in their power to let these prices come down. Because if you look at that article that I just sent you, yep, I'm putting it affordability, up right affordability is down 8% year over year. You know, it went from 42% here in Southern California to 34%. And that was an article in August, and I'd have to look to see what the article, uh, what the interest rates were back when the article was written. 
it was written on August 26th. And so I would have to check that out. And this guy, John Lanzer, he's he's a pretty smart guy. He's he he writes good stuff. I mean, this requires a lot of research, you know, what this guy does. So and he's you know, he's a little bit clueless because he's not out in the field. He's not a but but he does have a good sense of how the market is. And he's, uh, I'm friends with him on Facebook. So I follow his stuff. And this was a recent article that he wrote. And Orange County is a hot market. You know, it's, it's holding its own. It's like South Florida. It's not, you know, we're, they're not seeing crazy price drops. Uh, they're not seeing, you know, it, it's an anomaly. It's an anomaly. God, I can't even talk today. What the hell? Anomaly. Is yeah. Um, so what do I tell people as I show them an article that I wrote and I said, prices, you know, interest rates go up one and a half percent. Prices are going to drop 10 percent. And then I show the payment difference between the two prices. And then I ask the people, what do you think is going to happen to interest rates? What do you think is going to happen to prices? Oh, I think they're coming down. I think prices are coming down. Okay, if prices come down, what do you think is going to happen to mortgage rates? Oh, I don't know. I think they're going to go up. Okay, so I ask those questions to people when they're at my open house. Then I have a table with a copy of that article that that Lee has for everybody in the monster, you know, the coaching yep. student. I'm pulling it up to make sure everybody knows where it is right now. And so then I can... give, I hand a copy of that article to the homeowner or potential buyer when they walk inside the open house. And I just say, hey, you know, read this. I don't know how true it is, but I'm the one who wrote it. It seems to be holding true for this year because interest rates are higher and prices have come down. So you know, take a look at this. And, you know, if that's what you think is going to happen with prices, then, you know, look at the monthly payment difference with a one and a half percent higher interest rate and a 10% lower purchase price. The payment is exactly the same. It's like a 30 something dollar difference per month. So what's more, you know, if you're paying cash, then, you know, probably you'd want to wait. You wouldn't want to buy right now. But if you're going to finance it, then should you take the guarantee with the lower rates now? What do you think is going to happen to interest rates? Are they going to go up? And if they do go up, then you're locked into a lower rate now. And if they come down, you know, our company has a great program that you can refinance to the lower rate at zero cost, as long as there's enough equity in the home. And that all depends on what happens with housing prices. If housing prices drop and you only put 10% down or 20% down, then you may not be able to take advantage of those lower rates, unfortunately. And that's what happened in 2008. There you go. Well, well, the, the the rates were actually higher, but the the housing prices came down and all these loans adjusted and people couldn't afford the higher payments. And they tried to refinance. They, they didn't have enough equity. So there were a lot of short sales. And that's when I met Lee, because I wanted to learn about short sales. And don't worry, so, we'll have short sales again. People bought at the top of the market. It's already that way in Las Vegas. They've already lost 10% if you bought at the top of the market. Congratulations, Las Vegas. Uh, so Fred's piece that he was talking about, uh, for those of you on the call, remember homeadvocates.io. If you can't remember that, just Google Home Advocates. We're line one. Uh, it doesn't get much easier than that. We are page one of every search engine. Everybody who is a part of the program is on page one with us. 
Uh, if you don't see your name on here and you are a part of the program, uh, please let me know because I have updated it recently. Uh, so just let me know so I make sure that I get the information right on the front page. I think it's a very powerful tool. Click on Home Advocates Coaching and that will take you over to our coaching website. Uh, all you do is you log in, go to your library. Under your library settings, you will have three different modules. The one we are talking about is the one called The Hub. On The Hub is our guaranteed marketing method called Monster Marketing. Still trademarked, still in use to this day, still works with even more video and explanation with leads, uh, automated call center, the whole bit. Really simple and straightforward. On this page, there are things you can download that I have put here intentionally. The first one is Fred. I needed somewhere to put it. I got to create a Fred page. If you click on the cost of waiting, this is the uh, PDF document that Fred uh, talked about. I don't know how far back we did it, but there you go. Um, also the logos. I also think the cost of waiting would be very powerful in your first meeting package which is uh, all your stuff from item 12 when you go on your appointments. Um, I put it as item 13, should say see above. You don't actually, all the stuff is up at the top. All you do is click on it and it'll automatically download. Simple as that. Uh, plus three or four different logos that you can use in your own marketing uh, with different backgrounds. That should handle all of that. Uh, and if you're on the call, I will, uh, I did put a link in for you at the upgrade price instead of the full price. So if you are interested, please take advantage of that. We guarantee that we will get you face to face or your money back. I have yet to pay out on that uh, ever. All you have to do is do it my way. And so here you go one more time. That's a one-time fee that includes your leads. It includes the call center. It includes everything. So there you go. Uh, I think what we're going to do right here is turn the video off and take questions from people. If you have any questions, go to Home Advocates. Just type it into your browser or your phone or however you're watching this, and you'll see us line one, page one, on every search engine. Uh, we are the only home advocate driven team on the planet. We beat out actually government organizations and so forth. So please take advantage, uh, join our program. Uh, we're getting ready to shift out and change the structure of how we uh, do this in the future. We're kind of capping the platinum group where it stands, where you only have to pay a one-time fee. So if there's a link, take advantage of that link.